San Antonio is now home to a whole different kind of sport that you can check out later this week. Now, I just found out about these guys. They're just amazing people, and many of them did not even know that this kind of sport or game even existed until, well, until some of them nearly died. Pressure's really on now. They call it sled hockey. It's something like wheelchair basketball or rugby, but on ice. Most of these players have never even heard of it until they lost a leg or two in Iraq. The you know, first couple of times I've fallen over this and that, but after a while it just gets fun. You get to smash into people, fall down, and get back up, just a smile on your face, and you know, let's get up and do it again. Army Specialist Josh Stein lost both legs in Iraq last Easter Sunday. That's less than a year ago. It kind of messed me up. Oh, I can't do this anymore. I can't do that anymore. But through the help of other amputees, you know, and uh, the therapists and my family, mostly, um, they got me back to the same old me. Some of these guys may have just got wounded, Randy, and they're still going through rehab. And to be able to get out here and do this really helped shorten that time period of adjustment. A couple more times. Lonnie Hanna is a Paralympian who was injured years ago in an accident. Now he's working with the San Antonio Rampage hockey team, along with the city of San Antonio and a group called Operation Comfort, to put this group together. And all of it is to help put these men back together. It's just a great way to channel your energies. And it worked for me 22 years ago, and it's working for these guys now. Stein says there are more of these guys than you'd realize. 20,000 plus injured in Iraq and Afghanistan, many of them sent to Brook Army Medical Center here in San Antonio to recover. The, the biggest story on the news now is, is more or less, okay, how many soldiers are killed? It, you always hear about the bad stuff that happens in Iraq. You never hear about the good stuff that happens after we come home and how, how we're being taken care of, how the doctors and therapists and you know, all the case managers are working real hard to get us to where we want to be. Off the ice, Josh is learning to walk on high-tech prosthetic legs. Something Vietnam War amputees never even dreamed of. Prosthetics these days, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Back then, you know, they, they just give him a wheelchair and say, off you go. Now it's, we're going to make you walk again. So now he plans to go back to school to learn how to make and fit prosthetics. He's already working to get others here back in action. So let them know that life's not over with. You know, as soon as you get out of the hospital, come on, let's go party, man. We're going to go out and play hockey. We're going to go out and, you know, play wheelchair rugby or something. Let them know that, you know, life still goes on. And put a smile on their face and let them know, you know, they're still the same person inside as they were before before they got hurt. And if I can say anything to anybody out there right now, it's uh, don't ever give up. No matter what anybody says, you shouldn't give up. Never give up. Pretty amazing guys out there. Interesting sport. It's been around for a while, but never here. Elsa, you may not think about it, but I guarantee it's happened to you. You know, you're walking along on kind of a rainy day close to the street, and you get splashed. Of course, a lot of that rain has dried up today, but all this could be avoided, of course, if people would just mind their manners. When it's gray in SA and the rain puddles up this way, it can be a real transportation downer for Luis Rodriguez. So if you were standing right there, if somebody came through here, how, where would it? Where do you think it'd go? Oh, oh at least in my waist, not higher. <laughs> yeah. Have you had that happen? Oh, yeah. Rodriguez has been riding the bus exclusively for about a year, and when there are puddles, he knows he's probably going to get splashed. Do you think it's mostly that they're not paying attention That's or right. they just don't care? 50% 50, 50 of the time it's not paying attention and the other ones are just malicious. For the most part today, people seem to be polite at this stop. Seems though, bus savvy riders do follow some unwritten rules when it rains. Notice no one's sitting or standing too close to the street. Yeah, right well, the buses pass, they kind of splash people when they come by. Over on the west side? No me gusta. I don't know. I don't know. Make, no, no, he didn't no. speak English. I don't speak Spanish. But there's no language barrier when it comes to bus stop splashing. Splash how high? <laughs> While we were shooting this story, of course, everyone stayed dry, which is especially good when we were talking to Lewis. You ever get angry? I look for rocks sometimes. <laughs> no, you don't, yes, do you? I do. <laughs> That's something to think about when you pass a bus stop next time it rains. Bottled water could soon be getting a price hike as well. What makes this worse is the price hike would come through taxes. At least that's an idea being tossed around in Austin. News 4 WOAI's Steve Linscombe is here to explain how this would even work and what we might see. What are the benefits from this, Steve? Well, it was proposed yesterday by State Representative Alan Ritter of the Beaumont area as a way to raise millions of dollars for things like pipelines, reservoir building, and conservation programs. 
but most people we talked to were not too thrilled about taxing something as basic as water. We buy it all the time without paying a sales tax now. But some are considering this bill as just another way of trying to quench the state's thirst for more money. It would slap a six and a quarter percent tax on a bottle of water. Your favorite bottled water that now costs about a dollar would cost around a dollar seven. And what else? Salim Ali owns a convenience store along Jones Maltzberger. He says taxing water might raise a few eyebrows. They will notice, but to me, I don't think it's going to affect it much because people are more concerned about their health than the paying the taxes. That may be true, but other store owners we talked with said a tax like that could result in a 20% drop in bottled water sales. From talking with customers, there's a definite feeling that a tax like that has a tendency to grow over time. Uh, it depends on how much it is, and uh, in a way, um, I think they're getting a little bit overboard on taxing everything nowadays. Would you do anything differently, like drink more tap water than, than bottled water? Probably so. Put some filters at home and so that type of thing. The tax could raise close to $100 million a year. That could go to pay for future water projects here like this. Expanding a desalination of Carrizo and Wilcox Aquifer water south of San Antonio. As well as expanding the Twin Oaks facility, an underground water storage reservoir that currently holds a three-month water supply for the city. If you thought the escaped monkey story was wild, just wait. And you might want to put down the dinner for just a second. Just a second. Saws is turning human waste, yes, into renewable energy. So first question here is how does this work? And most importantly, where is this stinky job happening? News for WII, Steve Linscombe has all the answers for you right now. Steve? Well, guys, this is the first of its uh, kind operations being launched here at San Antonio Water Systems uh, Dos Rios Water Recycling Facility. They are the first to complete the bio waste recycling trifecta. The recycling waste water, waste solids, and now all the gas from it all. What you flush down here, the city is more than happy to turn into money here. Cutting edge technology developed by the Massachusetts based company Amoresco takes methane gas from solid waste held in these big holding tanks and through these pipes creates clean burning natural gas. And many plants including our own use this gas on that site but this is the first time that it's going to be actually sold on the open market to any customer that wants it. Amoresco owns the gas processing facility and will sell the gas itself. But saws in the city get paid a percentage of the profits, estimated at $200,000 to $250,000 a year. And that will go back into our budget and help reduce our operating costs and hopefully help keep saws rates affordable for many years to come. Currently, the gas that will be sold is just being flared off as useless. The start of this methane gas plant makes essentially everything you flush reusable. Saws has been recycling wastewater for years, putting scrubbed water back into the Medina River. Its solid waste recycling operation provides compost material for local nursery companies. And now the methane gas to be sold on the open market, making San Antonio the first U.S. city to complete the bio-waste recycling trifecta. Now, Saw says the facility is going through some final testing, but it should be up and going next month. Reporting live on the South Side, Steve Linscombe, News 4 WOAI. It is certainly a little chillier than we are used to in March. In fact, a lot chillier. Record-breaking temperatures predicted here today. News 4 WOAI's Eric Rung live downtown where he spent a good part of his day suffering in the bitter cold and talking with people about the weather out there. Eric? Beamer, I don't know if you want to say suffering. Like we said, it wasn't exactly chilling, but it, it definitely did break a record. Of course, I'm going to bury the lead here and make you watch my story. And it was interesting walking around out here today. Some people having gloves and hats on, other people's in shorts, proving, of course, that cold is relative, even if it does break a record. Talk about a turnaround in temperatures. No matter how you look at it, gray clouds, rain, chilly temps all make for a pretty miserable day for many of us trying to get from here to there. Hey, just when you start thinking it's going to start warming up, then here comes the cold, the rain. Of course, you already know a day in March blowing in like this is not the usual song and dance. You think you'd be seeing your breath in uh, March? No, I guess that's what we get for having a warm January, right? You know what they say, paybacks are a... Uh... 
The record low for today is actually 47 degrees. It was set back in 1891. The average temperature for this time of year, 74. For those math whizzes out there, that's a 37 degree difference in the wrong direction. Uh, no, like it. it's cold. And really weird. Last year it was 81 degrees on this day. In 07, it was 71. So if you don't like it, just wait for one more revolution around the sun. Chances are March 13th next year won't be like this again. And now what was our highest temperature of the day? And it was actually 46 degrees. So we only beat the record by one degree. And we got up to 46 degrees uh, just before six this morning.